I'm a big fan of the FabFilter plugins. I think that they're really solid, they're great. I use them all the time for certain things. And uh, so today I thought I would review the Pro MB by FabFilter, which is their multiband compressor, and show you some little tips and tricks on how I use it while telling you how to get the most from it yourself. So let's dive into my computer and I'll show you exactly how I use it. Here's the FabFilter Pro MB. This is their multiband compressor. Uh, I'm a massive fan of multiband compression. I have been for a long time, ever since I used to use the hardware Masalek um, MLA3, if you know that. Any um, pro guys out there who are Masalek fans, that's a great bit of kit. If you're looking for a hardware multiband, that would be my go-to, although the tube tech is is pretty good too, but um, yeah, Masalek's good because you can use it for different stuff. Anyway, this is the FabFilter Pro MB. So essentially what we're talking about with a multiband compressor is we can have grab certain sections of a track, uh, a certain frequency range, a band of frequencies, and we can compress them. Um, on this, we can expand as well, so we can go the other way but let's just talk about the compression at the moment. So what this does is if there's something sticking out of a mix, we can hone in on that section and just use a multiband as that section comes up to grab hold of the sound and just stop it from being too leery, basically. So also what you can do, which is something that I've always done, is used it as a kind of broadband EQ as well, because you can lift the frequency range in certain areas. I've always used multiband e e as EQs, so multiband EQs too, so I can like raise and, and get curves going. So kind of in a dynamic way, you can use it. So as the track's playing, it will um, move the signal around in a dynamic way, so it will pull the signal down, as you can see. Let's just run through all the settings before I start waffling on about how I use it. The great thing about this plugin and FabFilter plugins in general is that they have got so many ways of controlling them. They're great. You can just grab and manipulate stuff and really see what's going on, which is nice sometimes. I know I keep saying in other videos, you need to be able to just use your ears and not use your eyes because your eyes can deceive what you're doing. But it's actually quite handy when you're doing something surgical like this to be able to then see um, when the track's playing you can see areas that are poking out and it's just just for a quick look okay i can see that area is good let's just get that and sort of hold it down a little bit that's what really i would use the uh my visuals for on here but i do like the way you can just pull the stuff down instead of having to use these knobs at the bottom all the time it's quite nice that you can just grab these areas and, and really move them in and out. And, and also you can change these curves by sliding up and down my mouse, which is really nice. Um, I like that, it's really cool. They're, the way that they set these up is perfect. That goes the same for their dynamic EQ that they have as well. So you have a threshold which you can grab more of the signal or less of the signal as it's coming in. You can see that happening and, um, and listen to that. There is help as you can see all the way through. This is the range, so this is how much it's gonna pull down by. As you can see, as I pull that down, then the dB changes here. When I'm mastering, I usually have it in, in three like that because I don't really wanna be taking more than sort of minus one, minus two off. If I'm going any more than that, I know I'm taking too much because by the time you get to mastering, any small changes are amplified because you're at such level. So that's why you end up doing small tweaks that make big differences uh, at mastering rather than if you were using this for mixing, where it'd be, you can, you know, you can do whatever you want because you're using individual instruments rather than having it on your mix bus. So it's a very nice, very nice little picture I've made there, isn't it? Um, so, I don't tend to use it too much like this, where it's all over the whole of the image. I think that can get a little bit crazy. They've got some um, some basic settings in here that you can use. For, so for mastering, you can have four band. I mean, that just is crazy to me. I wouldn't do anything like that because it just looks 
too much and really what I'm using it for is I just want to use it for certain areas as I said so for example if I had something going that was just getting a little bit out of hand as like more of a de-esser around sort of 3k I might use it in this way so that it's just pulling that as, as I said I'm, I'm using it on three so I'm just doing it so as the, as that kind of sissiness comes in it's just going to grab it and pull it down there and the same with the top end just to kind of smooth out the top end sometimes I might sort of give it a little bit of level and just have have this moving let me show you so the bit that's got my top end on there we go. so I might raise it and then get it moving let's just put a bit of pressure And there you can see it's kind of making the top move and it's not doing too much. So it just can liven up the top end. I can change the curve so it's a bit smoother. So things like that. I like to do things where it's just using it for certain areas rather than across the board for everything. I just find that's just a little bit overkill and it's kind of moving the mix a bit too much. And at mastering, I really want to just try and do as little as possible uh, some kind of creative things like this but really I'm trying to do, really clean up the sound and make a good representation of what an artist has given me to do or producer so I don't tend to go crazy on it I think that's a little bit overkill so just use it for sections where you might might need it for example if it's getting muddy you can, might use it sort of around the, the 160 to 220 area uh, you might use it on the bass to really sort of tighten the low end up a little bit. So if you've got some really heavy subs going on, you might want to grab hold of those and just control them a little bit. Now, um, whilst we're in the low end section, let me show you another little thing you can do. On this output here, you've obviously got attack and release as you do with all um, compressors and you've got ratios. I tend to leave these set how they are. Um, four to one's pretty good for, for this kind of thing. So I, I tend to leave these. Look ahead, I always find just sort of dulls the sound a bit. So I kind of leave that where it is. Uh, but the trick I was just going to show you, you can do a little bit of stereo manipulation, if that's a word. It is. Uh, and you can bring in the sides. So for the low end, if I'm doing it in the low end, I can actually just bring in the sides of it and mono the bass using this bit of kit. So that's a nice little little tip for you there you can do now you can have this in different phase types now i always i i always use it in linear phase a lot of the time because it sounds cleaner to me but sometimes dynamic phase can have a little bit more vibe so that really is uh flick through it and check it out what you can do at the top here is with all fab filter stuff you can copy the settings over to b and so then you can just a b them across so you might so let's say, for example, I've just copied that and then on the B channel, then I'll change that to linear phase. And so then we can then switch between the two and we can see which is uh, which is working and which one isn't for, for me. You can see that, you know, the, cert the, cert the way it sets it up is a bit different. So that's what I do. I tend to A, B stuff a lot, see if it's better, see if it's worse. I like that. Oversampling, I always have that on times four. It just sounds more detailed. Uh, that will suck up a little bit of CPU, but not too much, so you should be okay. Um, look ahead, I do have that on here, so um, I will be using that there, but that's it. And then that's the rest of it I kind of leave, leave as is. I just make sure that I haven't got too much level coming into it because it can overload quite quickly, so just watch out for that. But then apart from that, yes, the way that I'm using it is to make the top end a little bit more lively, maybe control the mids a little bit if they're getting a little bit out of hand and a little bit tizzy and edgy. So I can use this to take off a little bit of edge in the same way that I would with the de -esser. That's how I use it there. And uh, I tighten up the low end with it here and maybe mono the bass, bring the bass in a little bit. You can. The good thing about that is you don't have to go, okay, it's all mono after that point. It's, it's bringing in just in a bit of it. So you've got a little bit more control on your monoing in the low end. And, uh, and you could always add a little bit more stereo to the low end, um, which is something that I've discussed in other videos rather than just always monoing. It can give you a nice, heavy, big sound just by bringing the 
um, stereo information out a little bit in the low end. So, yeah, definitely use your ears. You can listen here so that you can you can mute this section here or you can um, solo it so you can hear exactly what frequencies you're dealing with, which is um, pretty handy when you're when you're working out where the sound is, what's happening. But um, yeah, just again, use your ears, work out the different things and just use it sparingly. It can get super dangerous if you're going too overboard with multiband. It's very easy to ruin someone's mix by using it too heavily. And it can sound great and sound really exciting, but actually when you, in the real world, when you send it back to the client, for me, I've always found that they're not too happy with the fact that I've totally got their mix jumping all over the place. So yeah, use it. I use it just for sort of calming things down and tightening stuff up. So there you have it. That's the Fab Filter Pro MB. So if you want some presets for this plugin, you need to go to streaky.com, sign up to the Audio Anoraks newsletter. You'll then have access to presets for this Fab Filter Pro MB, but also loads of other software that I've worked on. I've put all my presets in there so you can have those and check those out. So also once a month you get a free newsletter that goes out. It has loads of giveaways. It has discounts that I get given that I pass on and other things that I see around the web that you'll like. So it's all good. You're going to love it. 25,000 others do. So make sure you don't miss out. Go to streaky.com. It's the Audio Interacts newsletter. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.